Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. This is episode one of a new series called The Breakdown that I'm doing where I'm going to select a photo and break down all the layers and just talk about what I was thinking that day when I was photographing it and what kind of went into the editing process. Not, not too deep into detail, but just get the conversation going on what was going on in these photos and, and in my head. So um, I'm hoping that this shed some light on some of my work and um, yeah, look forward to more episodes coming up. So to get started with this, this is a shoot I did for my local dealership for Porsche um, of this beautiful GT4 back there in the background and a spider here in the foreground. And um, I wanted to do something different. I, I shot the showroom a couple times with cars and just three quarter shots. And, you know, I was I was thinking, how can I show off the these cars basically in a different light? And, you know, with, with the convertible on the spider being able to come down like this, uh, I thought it was a cool opportunity for me to show off the interior of the Porsche with within the in the background, you know, got the GT4 and showing off the body lines of that car. Try, just trying to show off two different things at once um, to just kind of wrap the Porsche brand in full circle here. So when, when shooting this shot, um, I definitely wanted this triangular little situation going on here. I wanted your eye to go, you know, pretty much from, I mean, I guess it's more of a square, right? But it's like something like that and, and just kind of wrap you right with other little elements like the logo still in uh, a little bit of the lounge environment back there, but it's main, it's mainly all about what we got going on here. And, and the, the reason why I set it up like this is for the main, I started off with, I know my lights coming from here, right? So same, same thing over here. I know my lights coming from over here and that's going to give me my, my shape of the environment, right? I'm going to shoot the first layered shot and we're going to get right into that. I'm going to click all my layers off right now. The first layered shot would be boom there. There's my environment. That's pretty much where I start. Let's see what the light's shaping and let's see how I like that. And, and for this particular shot, we get into show, which we'll get into that. But, um, that's, that's what I had to start with. Uh, showroom lighting is not the best. That's why I turned to strobe because this, this shot right here is not acceptable. Um, I, I just did not want to roll with this, that there's a lot of things wrong with it. There's a lot of reflections I'm not liking. I don't like, um, this, this weird shadow we're getting from the desk here. Um, a bunch of, a bunch of things are, you know, wrong with it. So that's why we need to edit it. Um, so enough with that. Now, I guess we will get into clicking layer by layer and breaking the actual image down. So this is flat, this is raw, right? And then this next layer here I'm clicking on adds a little bit of contrast and it's, it's basically the file that I touched it up in Lightroom a little bit and then brought it into, into Photoshop or camera raw, either, either or camera raw or Lightroom. So that is our base layer to work with. And you can see I'm pulling the blues and a little bit of the reds a little bit more here. Um, and then we'll just start clicking on. So this first, I have it grouped here. I'll click this on and off. The first one is the GTS, right? So I have them all in layers here. And this is specifically, this group right here specifically is me working on just the GT4 here. So we'll click through these. So you can see, I'm going to zoom in here for you guys. So you can see like these little adjustments. I'll just leave it like this because we're, we're working specifically on the GT4. Um, and you'll see I'm making little edits. So these first three layers are actually different exposures, right? I shot with a polarizer and a strobe. I shot three to four different layers of light for the side of the car. And that's just me piecing them together. And then we will get into some of the brush work and the clone work and you'll see the detail change to it. I'm still working on just the side. So right here is all brush only, right? No strobe brush only. And now I'm basically just trying to match what happened here. And, and all this gets cleaned up. This blotchiness gets cleaned up, but just wait till the later layers. But so I'm, I'm basically just working with my brush here, finishing off the, the side of this car. And you can kind of get away with it a little bit because we're working on, um, you know, a strobed layer of a car here. 
So then you see I'm cloning out that that dirty some of the dirtiness and the blotchy and fingerprints and whatever weird lighting's coming in still through the reflections. Um, same thing, more brushwork. Obviously, I was just talking about how blotchy this is. So yeah, you, you dump strobe on the car, and you think you're all set and done, but but it's got to be smooth, right? I'm I'm very anal about that, and uh, you know, so I go in with a brush, uh, light opacity, and I just really work at it and into where the light where the light is actually hitting you there's light here right for whatever reason i don't you know it, it's acting funny in some of these spots whether it's the polarizer or the way it's reflecting back to the camera so i'm going back in and smoothing the way it should have been hitting basically so you could just see the click on and off right there um more brush work on the top again um y you know i, I went with a like a 0.5 pixel noise on the brush layers that I'm doing so I didn't like I didn't like how blotchy and noisy this was so I just smoothed it out a little bit added the noise back in and now I have a consistent side so right there you'll see a little shift to the spoiler here that's right there just a bunch of little little changes that go a long way so boom you see the rear diffuser um, basically there I'm not going to get too much into how exactly I lit it. You can tell that I added a strobe there, but I was using a, a five in one reflector and bouncing the strobe onto that reflector to then, you know, have it reflect back onto that diffuser. So that's how I achieved that. And I, and I just selected it, you know, I just selected it out and, uh, basically just Photoshopped it, Photoshopped the, uh, the other layer in there. I, I merged the layer of light, um, that was bouncing into that. So then we got the rear shot of the rear there. We'll click on and off for you guys. It gives the rear a bit of a pop and it gives the spoiler a little bit of rim light, which is definitely needed because, uh, you know, on the back end like this, it's just so dark. You know, you don't even get to see the detail down there in the diffuser on the, raw, the normal file, but you know, and, and you can, you can edit a, the raw shot to, you know, bump up the fill light down there and stuff but this strobe in it gives it a little bit extra punch uh in a situation like this where it's it's a a very bland flat lighting one from one direction so um again here is um, more brush work right so i'm going in and i'm smoothing everything out i decided here to keep a little bit of the reflection um just just to kind of plant it in the location sometimes you can get carried away i i myself if you know my work a lot of times the, the sides of the car and the rear of the car the front of the car it's uh very very smooth and clean like over here and sometimes that's not good sometimes you want to keep a, a little bit of reflection to let you know what's shaping there and what bends and how it bends and uh and it plants it in the location too especially when you're working on compositing you, you know you want something to plant it in that location sometimes so not all reflections are are the enemy um, boom, more, more clone work, getting rid of the hotspots from, uh, from my strobe. You can see around the Porsche logo and the GT4 logo there and, uh, the rim light on the rear diffusers and the, and the, uh, spoiler there. So just cleaning it up. Let's back on a little bit. We're still on the GT4. We still got three more layers on the GT4 and you can see there's, uh, a bunch of little stuff happening still. So up in the front here, I had this little haloing effect that, I don't know, whatever this, this, um, you know, the glows coming from the front end here, it needed to be fixed on top of that. It was a little harsh with my painting there. So on this layer, boom, I, I click that and I basically select out here, grab from here and clone, uh, some of the wall in, you know, just to clean it up a little bit. So there's not this weird glow that was coming from there. Um, added an, another little layer of blue brushwork right here right there to uh to kind of soften that highlight again it, it's still kind of there and i purposely did that just to um plant it because when you're out here you say oh okay there's there's some sort of light happening from there um and i and i did the same thing with the front bumper there if i go back through you can see right here if i go back through yep see right there And that is it for the GTS, right? So I'll click on the GTS as a whole. I minimize the layer there so that all of that's in that group right there. Um, but here it is, before and after. 
and I and I think in there in one of the side layers, um, I used the wheel, the light from that was hitting the wheels from one of the side layers, so you see a little bit of pop there. All right, so now we have the layers of the spider in its own group up here. So we will start going through these, and there's the first. Um, basically, I selected this whole the whole car out here. And this is a layer of light with a, a new camera raw edit on it where I bumped the fill light a little bit so you could see in this in the inside the car. Um, it's that that layer right there is basically the a sh strobed version of the Lightroom edit coming in. Um, layer masked it on, painted it on, and this is the base. Again, a lot kind of wrong with this. We got weird hot spots. Let's uh, just kind of go in and, and on a shot like this, let's go in and say from here where do you go um so let me just get a other than red let's go blue so a couple things instantly for my eye when when i take this shot and i'm looking at it in camera um i already know that back here needs some work right whatever this is it looks like it's my strobe head um being polarized um that needs to come out we have a couple of spots here. Um, this th these spots just need to be cleaned up. There's a couple of spots, right? A lot of it's cleanup work. Um, this this side of this car is an issue, which it will get handled. All of this is an issue, which will get handled. What it is over here, like this little section here, is the the little booth that they have to show you what kind of paints you can pick to spec out the Porsche you're picking. Um, so that you know that's great, but it doesn't need to be in the side of our paint there. Um, another thing too is since we're shooting inside, you get a huge headache with a lot of crazy reflections, and this hood is a big issue because it's pulling this reflection. We have the light coming from here. We have the light coming from there, right, hitting here and reflecting down there, which I um I just don't like it. You know, you you can't even tell that it's red at that point. Um, inside the car, it, it did a pretty good job, right? The one strobe pop did a pretty good job. I think I add a couple more strobes in here. It looks like a lot of brush work, but um, it, it did a pretty good job for a base. You know, hey, that's what you have to work with. There's a little bit of glow effect right here, which we'll handle with some contrast and we'll make the reds pop a little bit more, but. So that that is where I'm, my mindset was on that photograph. So this is this I took probably like maybe twelve photographs, you know, maybe fifteen. I didn't probably use them all, but it's multiple layers. I'm on a tripod here and not moving and switching all this stuff. So um, let me click off this layer, delete it, and here we go. So the first one is me adding that contrast, right? So I'm I'm like this is a little too bright um, in comparison to the everything. So I, I added a little bit of a curve adjustment layer, just taking the highlights down just a tad. Um, and then we get into the clone brush work and uh, just a bunch of clone and brush work. So um, right here, you can see I'm cleaning up the edges already. Um, I, I talked to you guys about, you know, leaving some of the reflections in to plant it in the location. Like, I don't mind this because it, it goes with the contour of the, the car, right? Or the other you know, the headrest there. Same thing here. Same thing here. It goes with the contour of the body lines. I'm, I'm into that. So you can see right here, I get rid of this middle, whatever this was, this window right there. I get rid of that hot spot right there. And you can see too, on, on a lot of these, I'm getting rid of like other little, little issues. To clean it up like right here a little bit of it bleeds over there just to smooth it out it, there was something there that i didn't like um along up here you'll see there's a rim light a weird really weird rim light coming right here i think it was a highlight from a window or another wall so that obviously needs to come out and let's see if there's anything else on this layer doesn't look like it. Okay, so then we get into more brush work, and I'm working on the side of the car now. Here, this is the this is the big part. So again, I'm with a brush tool. 
I, I know, and, and this can be, you can get carried away with a brush tool, so you got to be careful, but um, I know that this probably should have been just all red. So what do I do? I go in with my brush, and I, I literally sample right here, you know, alt click and sample the red paint there, and then I brush it down here where I don't want that reflection, just like that. Just like that. All right, and then pretty much this should be about the same. So I'm I'm extending, I'm, I'm selecting just this paint. I'm going around the door handle, going right along the body line, and boom, I pop paint in there. And, and it's almost like a, a gradient. So like at the top, I might go big and go a darker red through the middle because it's the way strobe's hitting it through the middle and red red is not the easiest through the middle i'll go a little bit brighter down here since there's shadow right see how it goes bright dark bright dark so you kind of need to do the same thing up here to, to match the idea of the way lights hitting this car um it's a, a little less noticeable up here because that's a flat panel and it's just getting blasted whereas down here there's there's more of a, a hump to to add to have a shadow appear when you hit light with it so basically i paint this now you get this big issue here which there's multiple ways of going going about it basically when i made the selection i i could have feathered out this selection by like 15 pixels and then erased it off of what it was bleeding and handled it that way um for for whatever reason that day i decided to go this route and make my own so basically i selected it painted it then I added uh, to that selection, I feathered it like probably, like I said, 10, 15, uh, maybe a little less actually. And then I painted in black, but I, I did it with a, you know, kind of light. So I, I kept it something like this and I did like two, three clicks. Um, I'm on a mouse here. I'm not on the pen. So at like, you know, 60, 70 opacity, did a couple clicks and, uh, you know, just to have this fall off you know it's going to be darker here if my lights to the right it's going to be darker here than it is here so there needs to be like a transition and, th and that's what i went for there um and then there it is just cleaning it up going all the way to the uh the rim a lot of little things a lot of little things so that is the spider and now we'll click on and off the spider there's a couple more things too. I don't think that made it into the spider at the at the end. I started touching it up, so there's the before on the spider, and then there's the after. Um, also, to get just to get a smooth, this to turn out so smooth, I did do this on a separate strobe here, and um, I basically used that five, five in one reflector again, and I I bounce flash, um, I flashed the five in one reflector to bounce light into that little plastic unit there to to give it a nice transition instead of um just blasting a light there when i was when i was doing a bare light on it since the spiders and chrome um it was getting very very hot and starting to create glows and flares and so i just decided to whip that that bad boy out and now i got a clean white um reflecting because what's reflecting in it is a white sheet basically um so yeah so now on this this last layer here, which I don't normally do this, I've been getting better about being more organized, but on this layer here, a lot of it should have went in spider. Um, but it's a lot of cleanup work. So that I mentioned this haze here, that's gone, right? So I went in there and just painted with a black brush, added a little bit of noise. Um, again, too, there was a big green f little reflection here of light. So I basically photoshopped that out because from here it's kind of pulling your eye in there and it, it would have been nice if the green wasn't there because you could see the clock well. But um, I decided to go the other route and I'd rather just have it be darker and um, no green flare than bright and a green, green flare and you being like, what the hell is that? Um, and I also on another layer made sure I shot the, sh the screen as it's turning on. It loads up with a little silhouette and it says spider. So I made sure to shoot a separate frame. So I had that as well um, that I could just paint in really, really easy. Just you, you put it right over the square and you just brush it in, you know, brush it right in on the layer mask. So that's what I did there. 
and then some fingerprint cleanup and reflection cleanup here. Um, I think we even got some of the windows reflecting in there or some of the overhead lighting that's in the showroom. Um, it's all got to come out. Um, this next layer is just another contrast shift. I'm constantly doing little shifts to the, the overall light. Um, I don't even think you're going to be able to see that one, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. And then we have a, a little bit of a glow layer coming from over here. I just wanted to say, hey, my light's coming from over there, and I want to embrace it. So I just added this weird little glow coming from over there. Um, just to in further let you know that that's where my, my light source is coming from. The big thing with me and strobe is I don't want you to know where I'm strobing from. It would look weird if I, you know, let me just explain this. It, it would look weird if, to me it looks weird, if I'm strobing from here and it's hitting here, you know, my light, my light source is over here, but then I, but then I got a shadow from over here. It, it just, it gets really funky. So I'm, I'm big about not making the the strobes create my my uh shadow i'm the location the environment is going to make my shadow unless i'm working in complete studio or pitch black the the outside is creating my environment here and now i'm just letting you i'm just adding light here and there to to let you know what i want you to look at basically um so that's that's one of the big 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 things with my lighting um, and then we're back to the top layer, which I do a couple more things with the cleanup. So we will go in and just let you know. So I'm clicking on this and that is a reflection right there on the hump that I didn't like. Again, I like these ones because they're right on the seam there. They kind of, they kind of let you know, uh, what's going on there right here. They, they let you know that there's a hump there. Now, if I took all the reflections out of there, you wouldn't even know it was a seam. It would just be uh, complete red. And, and like that's like one of the biggest parts of the spider, in my opinion, is these two like iconic humps in the back. Uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the car, so I didn't want to um, get rid of that. And then on the other side, the shadow lets you know that there's a hump there along with the reflections again. So um, it was important for me to leave some of it in. And that type of decision making basically happens every single time I'm taking uh, editing a photograph. You, you have to be aware of it. Um, so right here, I had a little electrical box for the cars to plug into so they don't die. Um, got rid of this dirty mirror, uh, just by adding a gradient, I selected it, added a gradient. Um, it was like a light gray to dark. Um, I basically just didn't really care what was reflecting in there. I don't want you looking there. It's, you know, it's just going to reflect junk basically. And then the pillars too. Um, once I once I got deep into the edit, you know the hood was looking great. I noticed that the pillar was still reflecting the paint booth, right where you select your trim and paints and everything when you're ordering a Porsche. Um, so that needed to come out too. So again with a brush and you can see I went dark to light, light even lighter, and then faded it right up here. I just got my eraser and faded it back a little bit and now we got something like that still keeping some of the rim light right like you can see right here still keeping some of the rim light from this wall just to plan it a little bit but we did not need the rim light on on the car um i i at least didn't want it um so yeah so this is the final image um and you know, I plan to do more of these. I, this is, like I said, episode one, and I want to make this a regular thing, a, a weekly thing, where I don't know what day I'm going to be able to drop them on every single time. I'm hoping for Monday. Um, but I'm going to basically pick an image, and eventually maybe we'll we'll vote on, on Instagram or here on YouTube in the comments of what image we want to see if you follow my work. Um, and I'm going to break through it like this. It's, I, I don't want to get too in depth because it could be a two hour video, three hour video, like some of the live streams. I want it to be, I want to just open up the conversation. I want to talk with you guys in the comments and, and, uh, talk about art and talk about what my mind was going on in the process. And I think it will help you guys. And on top of that, I think it's going to help me break down my own images to be like, Oh, 
I didn't like that I did that or I didn't, you know, I want to I want to go through these layers, you know, kind of improv just with you guys and see what was what was happening in my mind and, and go through the work. And and uh, that's how I got here. So, yeah, please, if you guys um, are new to the channel and you guys want to subscribe or give this video a like. Um, the likes are going to really help me fine tune on what you guys liked and what you guys didn't, whether it was strobe or whether it was um, natural light, outdoor lighting, uh, strobing outdoors. I'm going to touch on a lot of that stuff. So when I see the the likes are, you know, coming in on something, it's going to let me know to, to tailor, tailor the page to maybe that. So, um, yeah, please uh, subscribe and look out for more. And I will talk to you guys next time.